All right, fellas, so I gotta make some round stock. And I'm gonna try using some sodium silicate that I've been sitting on for a long time. So I'm gonna make a mold and go from there. But I wanna show you this mold that I've had sitting for about a year now. I've been meaning to use it. It's not quite properly designed, but let's take a look at this thing. All right, so while we're doing this melt, we're gonna test out a, a new composition. I don't know how much I like it. I am seeing some cracks here. It is painted on very thick. New cracks on the refractory. Seems to be a fairly robust material. This is yttrium oxide with a little bit of the zirconium oxide and water glass. A little bit of sand. It's keeping the oxygen off of this brass is going to be important but the most important thing about melting brass is you got to get it out of there the seconds that, that it's melted never leave brass melted in a furnace you need to get it out of there the very minute because every second you're boiling off the zinc the vapor pressure of zinc at the melting point of brass is like i think 120 psi's or something like that it's pretty extraordinary all right so What I have right here is an old can of water glass. This is some of the refractory grade. This is a really old batch. And I'm just gonna add enough to this to get this to start mixing up. You don't, I think it's like 3% by weight they say or something like that, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. I just kinda got an eye for it. As I've said, I've made this stuff enough that I know what I'm going for. Ooh, that was a little much. Kind of going for a little bit of sand castle action like that. Where it definitely holds a ball together. See that kind of broke in half on me. I don't know if I like that so much. That's pretty good. I'd hate to not have enough and then it, I'm going to add just a dab more. Go with that. Probably gonna about do it. Okay, I'm gonna add a base for our floor. Actually, I should just fill the whole freaking thing and then stab the artifacts in. I'm gonna try and keep these somewhat far away from each other. So when I extract them, not like an issue. That's a little butter. We're right at about a kilogram there. I'll go ahead and leave that 10 grams extra. So this thing's been out in the weather. We're doing a little testing on that. That other um, zirconium paint we made. <clears throat> Looks fantastic on the inside there. This is white as can be, except for where that iron oxide contamination's at. It's actually vitrified right there. That's glass. So, man, it's got a really neat crystalline look to it now. <laughs> That's really cool. 
So this is the zirconium oxide coating with the high emissivity, an emissivity of like 0.9 versus the 0.6. So you're getting a heavier heat load going to the job. Yeah, but this paint, it stands up to rain. <laughs> Alright, total disaster. I have a massive leak. And I didn't know it. Alright, gonna try that again. Murphy's Law, man. Man, that's big, bad, and hot. Oh, shit. Just zoomed in. So I didn't do a very good job there. All right, you're fired. You can't pour, dude. It didn't melt it all the way. I was getting worried. I should have gave it another minute. I didn't want to over melt it and ruin the metal. So we're just gonna go with that. That'll give me enough what I need to work with today, I think. Yeah, I botched that. <laughs> I did not do a very good job there. You, you don't have a lot of time, so you find yourself very stressed for thought. And I didn't have much time to think about what I was doing. We'll do better on the next one. All right, that last little bit didn't want to pour out, but it's good that we're not seeing a bunch of that zinc fur. That white stuff you see there is off the, the refractory paint and the, the crucible paint. I think I'm just gonna beat it out of there with a hammer. I'm not gonna finger it around in there. That is really hard stuff. Look how hard that is. This mold material is exceptionally tough, which is a good thing. So if you ever were in the need to build some pretty big molds. All right. I don't know if I can use any of those, but looks like we can. I can clean that one up just fine. Terribly rough cast. Okay, so in my opinion, 
that was one of the best brass pours I've ever done because I didn't get any zinc fire at all. There's no zinc froth in here. None of that. The white stuff is refractory off the furnace wall. This is the slug that was at the bottom. No zinc burning out there. So it was probably not the end of the world that I pulled it out when this last little bit had not yet melted. Just that last little bit was still liquefying and typically during a phase change scenario in, in a liquid, the temperature stays consistent because all the excessive heat is absorbed by the phase change process. So the we were right at the melting point of brass when I poured this, not much higher than that, maybe a little bit. Now, as for the mold itself, this stuff is incredibly tough. I was impressed with how strong it is. Okay, so here's just one of the things that I wanted to build with this brass. A little beat up looking. This is just a test unit. I'm doing a test. So this has a hollow inside with a fuel rail going through it. And um, we're gonna see how much of a vacuum we can pull on this thing. I should start getting a catalog going of the different rates. This is going to be about 110 PSI's here. So we got 14 kilopascals of vacuum. I'll see what that is in inches of mercury or a water column. That's a um, pretty good vacuum. I want to say that's like six foot of draw. Like if you were to put that hose in water, it'll pull that water up six foot. I did a bunch of testing on that one day. But um, I've got other stuff I'm going to be building out of this brass stock. This was just a test piece. I've been wanting to build this for a long time and I finally got around to doing it. And um, yeah, not too bad. 14 kilopascals of siphon power. Not sure I wanna hook the bracket up. I'm thinking about welding the bracket to this steel pipe from now on. I don't know how much that's uh, gonna change things, but I'm gonna figure it out. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to make some casting molds that are just a little bit more robust than the green sand system, this material right here is definitely. So for anybody with high hopes of like maybe building a furnace wall out of this stuff, it just doesn't seem good for that. I'm probably gonna get hit in the face here. So I'll show you why we don't do that.
making a liar out of me. Last time the stuff just disintegrated upon heating. Well, you can kind of see what it's doing there. You see that? Barely any, like you can't do that over here. Well, you can, but not as easily. It's taking forever. Over here, I had a hole in seconds. You see that? That's why I wanted to do it down low so we could see the difference. So this is one way to break the sand back up, like just throw it in a, some heat or something. But that's not, uh, after heating it comes apart very 